The campaigners against female genital mutilation have had a challenge accessing this mountainous area of Kachingole in Katikiti sub-county Moroto district. So the practice has persisted. We as the IPs, we cannot, we cannot climb the mountains. This elder, Locholo Apinabum, resides at the mountains. He speaks with a heavy heart about the loss of his daughter and another who was paralyzed after they were cut as part of the culture of the Pokot people. When the girls were mutilated two years ago, uh, the girl, after the healing process, uh, kept bleeding. Many other girls here share the story of Locholo's daughters after suffering the effects of the knife. Sophia Nanjilo has lived in the mountains all her life. As part of the rite of passage into womanhood, she had her gentalia cut at the age of 16. She was part of a group of 25 girls. Nanjilo tells us five of her colleagues died of several complications that arose after they were cut. She was not spared either. She now lives with fistula. She sustained after a difficult delivery. We like doing it. Apart from um, no urine being released all the time, she also still en en endures the pain of childbearing when she's giving birth. The campaign against FGM has been ongoing for a number of years now, and Parliament also passed a law banning the practice in 2010 with a 10-year jail term for convicts. But FGM is still practiced underground among the Sabini and Pokot in eastern Uganda. Now men like Locholo have joined efforts to eradicate FGM, giving the campaign a boost since men are the key backers of the practice. It's the men who marry the girls who are cut. It's the men who receive the dowry for the girls who are cut. Activists say if such meetings to speak out against FGM attract a big number of men who had to leave their homes to calm down, then there is a progress. The Director General for the Country Programs at the UK's Department for International Development, DFID, Joy Hutchin, visited the Karamoja region to assess anti-FGM efforts. Her visit was a follow-up on the GAO Summit the UK government hosted in London in July 2014 to examine the issues affecting girls and young women, especially early marriages and female genital mutilation. <laughs> And I am so happy that they are not in danger of being cut and I, and I hope they will be able to stay at school and become educated. There have been at least two convictions since the anti-FGM law was passed in 2010. In one of them, the chief FGM sergeant in Moroto district, Namton Namon, who allegedly mutilated seven girls between 9 and 12 years, was sentenced to 10 years in prison. There is also need to help the former surgeons who lived off FGM find alternative sources of livelihood. Irene Namialo, NTV.